What happened? This rocket, designed to push a payload a downrange distance of 5,000 kilometers, was two for two in simulation, but despite a flawless launch and ascent, came up short on the actual launch day. Despite that, I'll be going over the build details as well as the details behind my new X4 rocket plane. And while I investigate what happened with my downrange attempt, Evelyn Wolf and Kevin Taylor play leapfrog breaking each other's crude altitude records. Let's get started. My attempts with supersonic jets last episode were a bit underwhelming, so I decided instead to put my energy towards the rocket plane contracts in the X-Plane research program. And the one I really want to do is X-Plane's high altitude, which requires me to get a crewed vessel to an altitude of 40 kilometers. The thing is, completing that contract will cause this optional experimental rocket planes contract to disappear. This one is part of a series of three contracts of which I've done one, and it requires me to get to a speed of 550 meters per second and achieve an altitude of 20 kilometers, something well within the capabilities of my X-3 rocket plane. That said, I got into designing the successor of the X-3, not surprisingly dubbed the X-4, that would be capable of achieving the 40 kilometers in altitude. I started with my shorter X-2 as I don't think this plane will need all the fuel that the X-3 has. Currently my highest rated cockpit is the X-1 cockpit which has a ceiling of only 30 kilometers. But my unlocking of the supersonic flight tech node allows me to upgrade this cockpit. It took me a bit to realize that this upgrade is accessed in the R&D center. Notice well the message that says cost after credit zero. I've noticed this before on previous upgrades. I don't know how this credit system works, but the short of it is that this upgrade is costing me nothing. Either way, after the upgrade, the ceiling of this cockpit is now 75 kilometers, more than good enough. The other upgrade needed for this mission was switching the XLR-11 engine to the XLR-35-RM-1 variant. This has a lower burn time, but improved thrust and ISP, which I think I'm going to need for the higher altitude. After making just those two changes to the X-3, I immediately gave it a test, discovering the elevators were not a fan of the higher thrust. This was fixed by doubling the mass strength multiplier from 0.3 to 0.6%. Then, on the very next test, the plane not only had no structural problems, but reached an altitude of over 50 kilometers, well over the 40 kilometers necessary for the contract. Back in the hangar, all I did was adjust the engine cowling so it would cover the bigger engine. I then went right back into simulation mode, where it again had no issues reaching altitude. The landing, however... Clear my parachute. What, what happened to my parachute? Why was there no parachute? Actually, the bigger issue is that I forgot to provide a forward landing gear when I replaced the cockpit. I then reapplied the settings for the drag chute, after which I discovered I have unlocked some new science for the cockpit, including high altitude flight, which requires an altitude of at least 40 kilometers and a surface speed of over 650 meters per second. There will be a brief time when those conditions are both true, so I might as well have it aboard. It was then into the VAB for another new build. One that unfortunately seems a little ill-fated. Also last episode I announced that I had built a rocket that achieved the 5,000 km milestone contract in simulation mode. The completion of this contract would finish off the early rocket development program, allowing me to move on to bigger and better things. As you may know, this is a contract that's been hanging over my head for some time. I figure it best to get this out early, it's still hanging over my head. Despite being successful twice in simulation mode when it came to launch day, which you will see later in this video, the game had something else to say. That said, I'm still going to show you the build. It won't take long as it reuses some familiar components from previous missions and I'm hoping will not require much further work to be successful. My last attempt at this was in three stages. The bottom and top stages were rockets you've seen a lot of. The V2 number no. 4 featuring the upgraded A9 engine and an Araby sounding rocket pushed by the upgraded AJ-10-27 motor. 
Between the two was a simple Aerojet SRB, which only burned for a few seconds. My plan was to stretch out the burn time of the second stage through the use of an intermediate LFO engine. And the one I chose was the Veronique, a starting tier engine that was available to me from the get-go. The Veronique was a French derivative of the V2 rocket, and it was first launched in February of 1959. As the motor wasn't as powerful as either the American A4 or the Soviet RD100, I rather forgot about it, but I'm hoping its smaller size and mass will have it serve well as a second stage engine. I removed the tail fins from the sounding rocket as I figured by the time this engine fires, the atmosphere will be negligible. I started with a procedural decoupler between the AeroB and the second stage, though I will eventually replace this with something lighter. Under that went a procedural tank and then the Veronique engine. The tank was set to high pressure aluminum with the shape a smooth cone, 700 millimeters at the top and 900 millimeters at the bottom with a length of 2 meters giving the Veronique a predicted burn time of 57 seconds, 12 seconds more than the rated burn time. Then after putting on the tail ferns from the Araby for some stability, it was ready for its first test. The starting mean time between failures is 3 minutes. What I'm really looking at is what happens to this failure chance when the run time passes the 45 second rated burn time. Okay, 45 seconds and I'm watching this mean time to failure. It's still staying at 3 minutes, so 50 seconds is safe. There, it's starting to go down. 55 seconds is safe. I, I think it's good. I, I burned for 60 seconds. Mean time between failure got down to two minutes, but I think I'm gonna live with. It. I think that's good. The Araby requires ullage and will need to be started before the Veronique runs out of fuel. As in the past, I'm using smart parts to handle the hot staging. First goes on the Drain X1, which I initially set to stage and start the Araby when the kerosene feeding the Veronique gets down 10%. Then comes the AGT timer, which goes into the same stage as the Araby engine. I initially set the timer for half a second, at which point it will stage, releasing the Araby rocket. I like to start these numbers a little high and then dial them down until I find the point where the staging fails. I can then bring them back up a bit, getting the numbers as close to ideal as I can. Eventually, I got the percentage triggered to 2% and the delay to 0.3 seconds. Though I found later in the build that I got more consistent results using action groups for this rather than staging. I also got rid of the procedural decoupler, replacing it with a hollow interstage, underneath which went a procedural tank set to a hollow aluminum cone, only 10 millimeters thick, 300 millimeters at the top, and 700 millimeters at the bottom, and 500 millimeters long. I used another hollow aluminum cone to create a cowling around the Veronique. This one 15 millimeters thick, 900 millimeters at the top, 600 at the bottom, and 950 millimeters long. Then came time to mount this assembly atop the V2. For this, I used a procedural ribbed payload adapter, but be careful, as there are two that look very much the same, but are subtly different from each other. And where they're different is where the attachment point is. So notice that the decoupler is way up there, up high, and on this one, the decoupler is here. That's, that's the difference between these two. Um, and I think, Honestly, this first one is probably my better plan, so we'll do that. I really like these payload adapters because in combination with the procedural fairings, I can make this transition a lot cleaner. Rather than hot staging the Veronique, I use three of these small spin motors as separation rockets. I'll use another AGT timer smart part to activate the Veronique engine half a second after the fairing, payload adapter and separation motors are staged. Now to save weight, the upper stages do not have the avionics necessary for attitude control. So before engaging the second stage, this rocket will need to be spin stabilized. With the 3000 km downrange mission, I accomplished this using the aerodynamic control surfaces on the V2's tail fins, but this time I thought I would use the same spin motors providing second stage ullage, this time for what they actually are meant for, and triggered once again by another smart part, this time the Alt Pro Altimeter, which I eventually set to an altitude of 48 kilometers. 
though I soon realized that I needed six of these spin motors rather than just three. It's amazing how much time you can spend on trivial things. The staging of the Veronique was problematic for a bit because once the V2 was staged, the rocket no longer had attitude control, causing McJeb to shut down, resulting in the throttle reverting to its initial setting of zero. I spent way too much time fighting with this before doing the simple thing of going into the game settings and changing the default throttle in pre-launch to 100%. But before I even got to that point, I adjusted my downrange script so that it could use my function library in the same way that V2 number 4 did last episode. But this presented a new problem. Uh, this is going straight up. Okay. okay. Um, the reason this was happening was because in the countdown function, KOS both locks steering to the up direction and the throttle to full, but with both attitude and thrust being controlled by KOS, McJeb doesn't have any ability to control the rocket, and the rocket just kept going up. The thing is, sometimes, like with last episode with V2 number 4, I don't use McJeb, and KOS does need to be in control for the entire ascent. The whole point of having a function library like this is to have code that is not modified for different situations. I need to make it so that the countdown function can do what it needs to do, whether McJeb is present or not. Thankfully, the fix was pretty easy. I added a parameter to the function called McJeb, the default value of which will be true. I then added a couple of if statements to the countdown. First, I only want to lock the throttle to 1 if McJeb is not present, as McJeb will be controlling the throttle in this situation. But if McJeb is present, KOS is going to need to unlock the steering so that McJeb can take over guidance once the launch clamps release. As the default value of McJeb is true, if I call countdown without providing a value in the brackets, the function will assume McJeb is there and give up control. But in the future, if I have a launch where I'm not using McJeb, I can simply put false in the brackets and KOS will maintain control throughout. And with those changes in place, the ascent went great. Moreover, and that is 5,000 kilometers. Yoo-hoo! Finally! Oh my gosh. Okay, 5,000 kilometers with the tech I had. I followed this up by posting my success on my Discord, clearly jinxing the entire thing, but I still had one nagging issue. My boot file for this mission was refusing to run. I could select it without difficulty in the VAB, but when rendered on the launch pad, it simply didn't do anything. I ran one more complete mission anyway, once again comfortably passing 5,000 kilometers, and began integrating the rocket, but the boot file issue kept nagging at me until I realized that the program had a size of 523 bytes, while the error B only had 400 bytes of storage. The next step up was 800 bytes. I paid attention to the mass as I made the change, but I clearly wasn't watching close enough as I'm only noticing now the 4 changing to an 8. Is that extra 40 kilograms at the very top of the rocket the source of the failure? I don't know, but it is certainly worth investigating. In the meantime, after hiring 20 more researchers, bringing the total staff up to 120, Kenneth Taylor and the X-3 rocket plane were ready for another launch. This is a plane you've seen a lot of over the past couple of episodes, mostly collecting Mach 2 flight science, but recall that I also have the second of three experimental rocket plane contracts, which also comes with its own requirements. So we got to reach 550 meters per second between an altitude of 10 kilometers and 20 kilometers. So I set the altitude here to be just under 20 kilometers. Uh, we got to get to that speed, that's not going to be an issue, and then we got to reach two, uh, 20 kilometers after that and then land normally, but we can still, this is so close to what we're going to be doing for our normal flight plan to collect the Mach 2 science anyway, this should work out very well. A 550 is coming up, so get ready on the speed control, that should make most of that contract go green. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we need to get up to clear. 2100. So now we just gotta wait until we're at an altitude of 20 kilometers. Okay, there. 
This can now be 20. There we go. Now a little off. All we gotta do now is land somewhere. Again, you can do this with a splashdown if you notice or anything. So if you want, you could probably just put parachutes on like an X ca uh, capsule or something like that. And uh, there we are. At least our science now is running. But we're gonna land on the runway. There's a little bit extra reputation for that. I mean, this thing's designed to land on the runway. This is like my calmest runway for landing yet, I think. Okay. Easy McPeasy pants. It was then straight into mission control to pick up the third and final part of this little series of contracts. And then it was into simulation where I discovered that these contract requirements were right at the very limit of what this plane was capable of. But barely succeeding is still succeeding, so after two weeks recovery and another two weeks mounting to the carrier, the X-3 was ready for Evelyn Wolf to have her go. Besides the contract, Evelyn should be breaking a crude speed record of 900 meters per second. But looking at the contract details, uh, we got a reach speed of 700 meters per second between an altitude of 10 and 28 kilometers. That's not going to be the problem. It's then after that I got to get over 28 kilometers in altitude and then land. Um, that is really what the issue is. And once you get up to that high altitude, in fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my rate of climb again. The teeny tiny little elevators here at the back really have trouble, really have trouble continuing to pitch up. It is a struggle. You can see it already happening. I'm going to put my pitch angle down to five. That's what I found in simulation is I was too slow getting this pitch angle down and keeping this rate of climb going up. Because what this plane needs is speed. Speed. You can see it's starting to pitch forward now. It needs. It still needs more speed. Once it gets a lot of speed, then the elevators start to do a little bit more work for us. But uh, it needs a lot of speed. <laughs> and I see we can, oh, it's happening again. We're starting to go down, but I, I. It's just. It should be able to start to pitch up again. This is what happened last time in simulation. I think I'm, I, 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 we're not going down as long as I did in simulation, so that's good. We're starting to get pretty close to level again, but you can see our speed really, really pit, picking up. And as that speed picks up, we get more ability to keep going up with our altitude. The other issue too is we already have used up more than half our fuel. Um, I could increase the length of the fuel tank because it's all about can I get to 2,800 meters on the fuel I got. They're 28 kilometers, 28,000 meters. I think things are stable, just not touching anything now. We're letting it go. You can see the speed is climbing pretty, pretty good. The altitude is climbing, but our fuel reserves are going down. This is full throttle all the way. Uh, I think we got maybe a little... <laughs> we're not going to... Well, we are collecting some mock science, so... But we're going to be over the speed, I think, pretty quick. It is running. So, I mean, there is that. Okay, 700 meters per second achieved. Now it's about the 28 kilometers. Can we do it? Come on, Evelyn. We have gone higher than any Kerbal has gone before. And we have now past the 900 meter per second crude speed record. Awesome. I don't know what the next one is. We'll take a look at that on the way down. But right now I want to pay attention. 27 kilometers. Okay, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Oh, we got this. We got this. 28, 29, done. Okay, cut that throttle. Cut that throttle. Cut that throttle. Going back down. Oh, I'm low. I'm low. I'm low. I'm low. I'm low. Gear. Whoa, I'm very low. What the heck? What the heck? Okay. Alright, I think I've, I've pulled it back, but oh my gosh. That was a sleep at the switch there.
Okay, level off. We're good. <laughs> oh, a little scary there for a moment. Just sort of like, wow, why am I so low? <laughs> okay. And bop. So there it is. The uh, contract is complete. We got a number of contracts here. If we go, we got the crude speed record, 15 reputation for that. We have our experimental rocket planes, 32 reputation, 150 confidence for that. And the fact that we put this back on the runway is another 11 reputation. But we're not quite done with rocket planes yet. The main event is yet to come. But first, my next tech note is still 11 months from being researched. So I added an additional 20 researchers to bring the science team up to 140, which knocked off almost two months from that time. It was then on to Kenneth in the X4, who is eager to beat the crude altitude record that was just set by Evelyn. But I should mention that, although it has been less than 20 minutes since you saw the X4 being built, for me it has been 23 days in real time. So if I seem a little bit confused as to some of the details of the mission plan, well you know why. Put that max climb rate at 30 and heading at that and engage. Engage. Now this is with a much more powerful engine. This is the uh, total upgrade here. The XLR1. Where does it say with the up? But it's the R RM-1 variant, which burns uh, with much greater thrust, but it's going to be going through the fuel quick. <laughs> That's basically the, what we're looking at here. Okay, contracts. We got, we got, we got 30 kilometers for our altitude, but we're going to try and get as high as we can. Actually, why don't I level it off at 30 and see if we can build brakes and see what speeds this can do too. I think that's a better plan. Oh, also waypoint manager, waypoint manager, waypoint manager. Um, there, okay. Because, do I have any, I, I must have put on, yeah. High altitude flight. Oh, I got a new experiment. High altitude flight. I don't know what it does. Oh my gosh, it's been too long since I built this thing. But you can see this thing building up speed. We're going to get 30. We're going to be built, obviously cracking. Oh no, let's put this at 40 then. 40, 42. Let's break the um, this uh, altitude record here, but... Maybe we can break the speed record? I don't know. Let's go for that high altitude record of 40 kilometers as well. Oh, that's the... Oh my gosh, I'm getting them all mixed up. Yes, 42. Perfect. Okay, I have to get the 40 for this. Oh my god, I got my... I got this one and this one mixed up. <laughs> that's what I did. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. But you can see, like, I'm at a pitch here of 30 degree climb rate. Again, keeping the climb rate at 30 degrees. You can see it's pitching up higher than that. And we are still accelerating. Like this, this, uh, this rocket's a beast. So this might be the thing to try and beat those speed records and stuff too. Like there's a two, okay, 30 kilometer altitude record just went by the board. That is awesome. We're looking at the 40 kilometer one. I wouldn't mind build, but cracking this 1200. It's starting to level off now. Might be running out of fuel before all that said and done, though. And we are running into some control issues, as you can see as well. As it tries to stay locked on where the runway is. Okay. Uh, 40? No, we just need to come down. And we're not going to break the speed record. So let's put this to 300. Um, but you can see now it's pitching down, but we have so little air, it's just basically just following the parabolic path <laughs> down. Uh, angle to the runway is 14, so that's encouraging. Let's put this to 20 for now. Hopefully it'll level off. Uh, we're not going to be doing uh, this fella, but we did beat the 30 kilometer altitude. That's good. Now we just need to land for the 40 kilometer altitude. Um, I really got to look at what this high altitude one is. Did we collect anything? Oh, we did. High altitude. Okay, let's give me some flaps. Actually, no, no flaps, no flaps. It's having enough trouble as it is. Um, 
Let's open up. This is what I'm looking for. Ah, uh, just on what's on the plane. High altitude flight. I was clearly thinking about it at the time, but it was too long ago. So high altitude flight. Let's put this at 15. Do I have to watch uh, Kenneth too? <laughs> oh, I should train Evelyn. Okay. Too, too many thoughts. Too many thoughts. Okay, so situations flying high. So you got to get over 40 kilometers. And that's it. So getting over 40 kilometers is the is the thing. And we've collected 0.3 of the 10.3 that was available for that. Okay. Oh, we're transmitting a crew report. Oh, we did a crew report. Oh my gosh, of course we did. We did a crew report over 40 kilometers. Cuz that's our first. Okay, cuz that's our first Kerbal in high space or high atmosphere. Okay, how are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? We got to slow down. Okay, this has gotten well under control now. Things are now... It's always a little sketchy. You know, when you're coming down from a new altitude and a new speed. But then you get yourself into this situation, been in this situation, you know, dozen times before in this series. So, you know, we're down to a subsonic speed. We're coming we have a nice approach to the runway. Our altitude is something sane. You know, so now now things are feeling pretty comfortable. Where's my parachute? Where's my parachute? That parachute did not deploy. <laughs> okay, there's something in the parachute settings I gotta check. <laughs> the parachute is armed and did not deploy. So, uh, thankfully, we landed without the parachute, so that's all fine. Contract is now complete, but uh, that's not good. Of course, there was another build you saw earlier this episode, and as I've already mentioned, this mission didn't go quite as well. As you likely recall, the contract here is to achieve a downrange distance of 5,000 kilometers, something this rocket achieved in both of the full simulations I ran, but that was when the upper stage was 40 kilograms lighter than it is now, something I didn't notice until the editing of this very video. That said, I do have a couple of other ideas that may also improve the performance of this rocket. There is a slight wobble after going to the second stage. Although the air is pretty thin here, perhaps a few tail fins may help stabilize this better. But I think the bigger issue may be the sheer length of the final stage. This goes all the way back to my decision to have the diameter of my very first rocket of this series be 300 millimeters. With each engine upgrade, I lengthen the tank without ever changing the diameter, simply because it makes the tank cheaper to tool. Perhaps my frugality is now coming back to haunt me. Either way, I have some simple ideas for this rocket that should have it cracking this elusive milestone soon. As well, again, only during the editing of this video, I noticed this optional X-Plane's lower supersonic contract. This is actually the first of two contracts and only requires maintaining a speed of over 400 meters per second, something the already designed Starfighter, which I abandoned last episode, is capable of doing. Perhaps we will be seeing some supersonic jets soon after all, but that is all going to have to be for the future. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.